Hey guys, welcome back to the Cool Classic Kids Show. And today we're talking about, well, the state of game preservation, something that I'm, you know, I strongly support and I think is very important. Um, video games are history, and I think that that history must be preserved in any way, shape, or form that we possibly can. But, um, you know, this is a video that I hope raises some concerns within some people that kind of don't really don't really care about, you know, game preservation and whatnot. It is important. It is a part of history. We need to see where we came from and how we got here and what um, holds for the future of, of video games, entertainment all around. But um, unfortunately, there is a study that has come out that has shown that, well, game preservation isn't doing so well. And the sooner we bring awareness to this, the better. But um, the article here says nine out of 10 classic video games are commercially unavailable study finds. The study finds that just 13% of video games from the pre-2010 era are, commercial, are commercially available, and it's hurting efforts to preserve video gaming history. Only 12% are available. The only way to play many games releasing before 2010 is through piracy or emulation. Game publishers have historically been rather antagonistic to both practices, and this is, you know, a lot of people say, hey, why don't you just go down the route of piracy? And I'm just like, why should that be the only way? Why should it be the only way? The gaming companies need to do better on this front. We shouldn't just have to resort to piracy and emulation to obtain these games. I would love to pay for these games. I would shell out the money for them, uh, you know, but these companies choose not to make these games available to purchase and that is a problem that is something that a problem an issue i have with all three major platform holders and all these other companies but they said from fixing up old d uh defunct sega saturns to dropping hundreds of dollars on ebay for rare titles like gamecubes eternal darkness sanity's requiem and it's crazy how insane the pricing of buying physical games that are you know now retro has gone up um particularly it it was it was definitely very um expensive beforehand but it got extremely out of hand during covids i actually you know chilled back on collecting during covids because it was just too it was too much man it's just unrealistic pricing retro game enthusiasts already know the struggle of enjoying early games from video game historians, the situation is even worse. There are several nationally recognized and lauded services for watching thousands of classic films. And that's the great thing about, about film. Preservation is definitely um, more welcomed and pushed. While I don't think it's perfect, while I think that there's a lot of um, particularly really old film that's literally deteriorating that needs to be restored and, and um, preserved through 8k means at least these companies behind classic film are more willing to go there but um the article uh the article continues but a new study shows that for the vast majority of gaming history from the 1970s onward nine in ten games remain unavailable for customers and by extension the growing sector of video game archivists a report from the Video Game History Foundation working alongside Software Preservation Network claims that the vast majority of games from the 1970s going all the way up until 2009 are largely kept out of players and historians' hands. Only 13% of games released in the U.S. before the age of vast digital distribution are, legal, are legally and commercially available, and the other 87% are only playable through some museums or through in industry uh, diarated piracy. Otherwise, you would need to spend inordinate amounts of time and money to collect old software and hardware to experience relics of gaming's past. In a phone interview with Gizmodo, Phil Salvador, the, li the library director at VGHF, compared the situation to film, where is much more buy-in from movie industry at large for preservation. Imagine if you could only get Titanic on VHS and and even then you can only see it behind a glass case. In the group survey, 
He looked at 4,000 historical video games released prior to 2010 and researched whether they remain available through legitimate rights holders. This included games from abandoned platforms like the Commodore 64 and more from still widely available consoles like the PlayStation 2, even though the latter system was one of the most popular game console consoles of all time with a long lifespan that lasted even past the PS3's release, only 12% of its games remain available. There, were, um, there was no five-year period before 2010 where availability rose above 20% for games released before 1985. Only 3% are now accessible. Guys, do I really have to get into like how insane that is? The numbers are there and the numbers are concerning. Like we definitely need to talk more about this. This needs to be um this needs to be on gamers' minds. I'm not saying, you know, to fake it by any means. If you don't necessarily care about playing old games, I get that. But there are so many gamers that claim to be genuine fans of gaming. And what way to support like what way to prove that than to want to preserve the history of your favorite entertainment medium to me it's a no-brainer you know and, and we could tell that there there's a lot of games that just like we think back on and we're like damn that was a damn good game how do i get that oh it's 150 dollars on ebay well fuck my life and all these companies don't care they actually d um they they encourage you not to fuck with these games, to not want to go backwards in time. They do not go to any means to make sure that these games are available for us to play. They just want you to play their latest live service pile of shit. But I digress. Salvador said that researchers were surprised that even some of the most popular games remain unavailable. Sure, few are really itching for the uh, Ratatouille tie-in game on Game Boy, but there's no way to play even massively successful games like Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns and Patriots outside owning the title on a defunct PS3 or emulating it on PC. And it's like, it, it is insane. Please, like, I've been wondering this for years and I occasionally bring this up. Like, what is going to happen when, P when you cannot access the PlayStation 3 store? When they turned it off, PlayStation tried to turn that shit off, and thankfully the community backlash um basically told them "fuck you, you're not doing this," and they listened. But PlayStation has no interest in preserving their PS3 titles, and the problem with PS3 is that man, that game, it, that that console, um, is not future proofed in any way, shape, or form. In some ways, you know, it was really. For the time, I think it was a really great console because they were able to get so much out of it. You know, the cell processor was, it, it was interesting in that way, but it is also extremely concerning from a preservation aspect. That cell processor is a bitch. And emulating PS3 games on PC, um, it, it, you definitely need a beefy PC, man. There's reasons why, there's reasons why. And I do have the PS3 emulator. And, um, you know, but this shouldn't be the only way once the PS3 is done, done. And, and even um, situations with the PS3 and the, uh, what is it, the CMOS battery, like stuff like that. PlayStation has no plan to preserve the history, the very rich um, roller coaster history of the PS3. They have no interest. They don't care. It's not important to them, clearly. And that, to me, is a concern. And I feel as though you know playstation gamers don't really care about that and to me that's a problem especially when you claim to have enjoyed those games on ps3 as mentioned in the company's blog post the closest available compare uh, comparison to other historical media artifacts would be a century old such as pre-world war ii audio at 10 percent and silent film at 14 percent it goes to show even with all the interest in some of these older titles, you're not going to cross the barrier of 30% or more, Salvador said. There are currently centers of video game history, like the Strong Museum of Play in Rochester, New York, 
But the problem is access. A researcher shouldn't have to fly hundreds or even thousands of miles and saddle up for what could be 10, 20, or even 50 hours of play for the sake of understanding games past. Occasionally, game publishers would creak open a, the window to allow more users to play a piece of video game history before closing it shut. It's created a cottage industry of small companies and individuals who make aftermarket or modded consoles capable of playing early software. Some companies like Digital Eclipse have created modern commercial grade emula emulations of classic games, but some companies remain very protective of their content. Nintendo is per perhaps the most IP sensitive of any major company, and this is my biggest complaint with Nintendo. And even ever since the company closed off access to its eShop in March, players and archivists have been unable to access a huge chunk of companies of the company's early, early catalog. Nintendo are such dicks about, about letting gamers play their old content. And then my biggest criticism of them is that they don't make this content available for purchase. They'll throw a little bit of it on their service, but guess what? I own none of that. I just subscribe to a service and I can play whatever games you choose to put on there. I own none of that. I want to own the games. I'm willing to put the money forward to buy. I'm not willing to, to pay um, an absorbent amount of money for a subscription service in which we're supposed to simply own nothing and be happy. Rights issues keep older games out of historians' hands. The nonprofit VGHF, founded by renowned game historian Frank Cifaldi, aiming to preserve the uh, and decimate decimate history of the medium, disseminate history of the medium. Oh my God, English! Do you speak it? The organization has complained that current ruling on copyright law, especially surrounding the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, has meant some companies hoard their intellectual property despite calls to make them available for archival purposes. They're literally saying these companies work against letting people play their older titles. The nonprofit pointed to the Entertainment Software Association as the main lobbying group Arguing to U.S. Copyright Office, the industry does enough to give access to old titles. It literally does not. You have actual companies lobbying against this shit. And people are just like, oh, man, this is not that much of a problem, right? Wrong. The ASA Trade Group has claimed that the companies under its banner, which includes the likes of Nintendo, Sony, EA, and Activision Blizzard, already provide enough of its content commercially. No, not even fucking close. The group cited some game console replicas like Sony's maligned, uh, maligned PlayStation Classics that came out with just 20 games in box. Oh man, you guys remember the PlayStation Classic? That PlayStation mini pile of shit that I refused to spend any money on? They apparently cited that. And if you're a fan of games, well, that was one of the worst console minis that had ever come out. Absolute garbage. Disrespectful. Uh, the fact that Sony, a company that knows, knows what gamers want, um, but chooses to outright not give gamers what they want. That, that PlayStation Mini didn't even come with a PlayStation controller that had thumbsticks, man. That, that was how much of an abomination that particular mini was. In a, statement, in a statement sent to Gizmodo, an ESA spokesperson said the video game industry's creative and economic vitality depend on strong copyright protections. ESA and its members' companies are committed to and actively support professional efforts pr to preserve video games and do it in ways that do not jeopardize future economic opportunity of their creative work. So yeah, basically we don't want you to play any of our older video games because go buy, go buy our new garbage. Salvador said the situation isn't necessarily adversarial, but that there simply hasn't been uh, enough data to show how big the problem is 
for folks trying to make sure gaming history is preserved and at uh, academically accessible. Some games also have extremely complicated rights situations, which keeps publishers from giving them a full release. Archivists are very weary about being on the wrong side of an IP lawsuit, so they're unlikely to ask for forgiveness rather than permission. Yeah, guys, overall, I think the numbers speak for themselves, and I hope that this gets to more people and that people sort of think about this. Uh, it's more than just about me. It's more than just about you. It's about uh, recording the historical significance of gaming. If you think that gaming is the greatest form of entertainment, if you love gaming, if you want, if you cherish gaming, whatever level you may think that is, why would you not be? for supporting the historical the the like preserving the historical significance of gaming even for games that you've never played before even for games you've never wanted to play before i think it's important that that people can can play superman 64 to to actually have that knowledge of how bad gaming was back then and also to play some of the most amazing games of the time like Mario 64 to be able to see like how how 3D gaming was pushed and how it's changed and how it's gotten better and I'm not talking about you know these remakes or these remasters that change things we should be able to play the original work the exact way that it was put out for the historical significance of it all now having you know a re a re-release of Mario 64 that we did get that mind you um I don't think is available for purchase anymore because Nintendo are dick faces when it comes to this kind of stuff but um I think it it's cool to have that as well where they do um clean up the controls a bit but I do also think it's important to play games as they were released so we can understand uh, where gaming has been where it is, how it got here now, and where it could potentially be going. It's all important. History is important. And I support preserving it, man. So, like I said, I do hope that this brings some awareness to some people that didn't really think of this as a concern. Because to me, I think this is the greatest concern of gaming right now. But we're too busy arguing on, on Twitter about the Activision Blizzard deal and um, bickering about nonsensical things. But yeah, guys, let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. If you can like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell notification so you know when I upload. Um, follow me over on Twitter or Kick if you'd like to continue the conversation. And guys, with all being said, I'm out. Peace.